I'd like to call the meeting to order. Everybody is present, uh, except for Mayor McNamara, who's on a personal leave. We have the land acknowledgement that was uh, read earlier in the evening for item C. So we'll move on to item D. Are there any disclosure of pecuniary interest in the noted agenda? If not, uh, we have a introduction and purpose of the meeting. The purpose of the meeting this evening is, is to hear public comment on a zoning bylaw amendment application for a parcel of land situated on the south side of County Road 22, immediately west of Sylvester Drive. The Director Development Services will present the report. This time, uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hillman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good evening to Council and everyone attending. I'll briefly go through the report. Um, I do note everyone in the audience are people very engaged with some of the developments in this area, but if we go to attachment one, please, on the report, um, I'll just go over the context here. And uh, what we're looking at on attachment number one of the report is the location of the property. And it's just on the south side of Canada 22, west of its intersection with the uh, Sylvester flyoff and the termination of Sylvester Drive, as you'll see on the image. So the area highlighted in red is the 16 acres owned by Mr. Petretta, <clears throat> who's the applicant. And the rezoning that's been filed with the town is affecting the area that's hatched out in yellow on that image. And um, on that area of land, what's proposed is a hotel and a um, small commercial plaza that's detached from that building. And you'll see that we've shown on there, um, and we'll get into this very briefly, an extension of Westlake conceptually identified that extends from the um, east limit of the current termination of Westlake Drive and ultimately would connect with Sylvester. And we'll just touch on that a little bit, a little bit later. So if we go to attachment two, um, some of the specifics around the proposal, um, it's what is being proposed is a six story um, hotel with up to 170 rooms. What has been provided I, by way of a preliminary site plan to conceptualize this development is a five story building on the image you see with 142 rooms, the footprints just under 20,000 square feet. And it includes many of the amenities one would see in a hotel, pool and uh, fitness facilities. Along with that on the easterly, westerly side of the building um, is the uh, small commercial plaza that I was speaking to. Um, and it's roughly a 10,000 square feet. Parking consumes the balance of the site along with landscaping. And you'll see that um, access to the site is proposed to be, um, just to get our bearings, Counter Road 22 is to the north. So the image is rotated, not normal with north at the top. Um, and the extension of Sylvester Drive in Westlake would be at the right side of the image. So on an interim condition, the site would be accessed exclusively from the end of Sylvester with a private driveway built across uh, where the future road would be built at some time. And you'll see it's labeled there, private driveway extension to Sylvester Drive. <clears throat> uh, very briefly, uh, if we go to attachment three, you'll see an image has been provided of the context and scale of the building, which of course many would be familiar with. Uh, this is shown as Fairfield by Marriott, but it's a standard looking sort of uh, hotel. That, that's pretty common anymore. So uh, if we go to attachment four, you'll see the surrounding land uses, and it's generally um, agriculturally used right now, and to the immediate uh, west is agricultural, and to the south agricultural. Um, commercial to the east, that's uh, the Subaru dealership. Further to the west is commercial, uh, it's a plaza. Um, ultimately, long term, uh, the lands to the south of this site would be uh, projected for residential development in the official plan. Lands to the West would uh, continue along, if you can imagine, the Westlake Drive extension. They're identified for commercial development as well. <clears throat> and then, of course, to the north is Counter Road 22, across which is uh, um, a range of singles and townhomes on the other side of 22. Just uh, very quickly, supporting document that was provided with the application uh, includes a traffic impact letter uh, that was provided that um, really assesses the situation in terms of if the development proceeds under the current condition, which is with the current road network and future improvements not provided, which are ultimately, as many will be aware, um, Les Bronx at 22 is proposed to be a partial interchange uh, one day in the future as part of the regional road network. The flyoff would continue 
um, at Sylvester and Westlake would be extended across so that the road network Westlake and Sylvester are a contiguous street with outlets going on to Manning Road uh, at Jam Sill. Um, Desiree will be closed um, as part of uh, other road improvements by the county. So what the, what the impact letter is fundamentally indicating is that the roads will operate at an acceptable level, <coughs> level under an interim road <coughs> scenario. Um, and that uh, ultimately with the development of the balance of the lands, a more detailed traffic impact study would be required. The town has been in consultation with the county and a lot of the road network in this area is of their jurisdiction and they agree with that approach. Um, <clears throat> so we are satisfied at this point that um, this development could proceed um, as proposed. Uh, the county transportation department has advised that it does not have issues and we saw correspondence was confirmed today and it's on the agenda that um, basically indicates their position and there's consensus around the need for a future impact study as the balance of the lands develop and the timing of that west lake extension is is analyzed so that at the time west lake connects further um, the amount of development that can be accommodated at the west lake and lesperance intersection is fully understood and properly designed very briefly, um, with our reports, we're always looking at um, issues around policy context. Uh, council decisions um, are to be made having regard to and being consistent with provincial policy at a very high level. We've reviewed that in our opinion, this is consistent with provincial policy and conforms to the county official plan, which directs development to fully service settlement areas, which, which is this location. The Tecumseh official plan, if we go to attachment five, um, shows that this area is in the uh, red. If we just look at the lower part of the image, uh, you can see count, count row 22 marked there. Um, the entire property is the thick black line. The red with the hatching is the area subject to the rezoning and the red represents general <coughs> commercial. So the official plan has this area identified for long-term commercial use. The zoning is required because the lands currently aren't in a commercial zone. They're in a site-specific agricultural zone that allows agricultural uses with the exception of greenhouses, mushroom farms, agricultural livestock intensive uses. So very um, sort of non-intrusive agricultural uses that have limited investment associated with them. And it's proposed to go into a site-specific commercial zone that would permit uh, the development. The balance of the land, which would be to the area in yellow, which is identified in the official plan, for residential use that would stay in an agricultural zone at this time. The uh, application has been evaluated in the official plan under a section called amendment procedures. And really what that section of the official plan is uh, directing everyone's attention to is uh, conformity of this amendment with the official plan policies, uh, availability, suitability of lands, compatibility of the proposal um, with both uh, existing adjacent and those that are planned uses. Uh, the ability of the town's infrastructure <clears throat> to accommodate the proposal and the adequacy of the transportation system to accommodate the proposal. So based on a, a preliminary review, it's our, our feeling that uh, at the administrative level that there is adequate regard to these provisions and that uh, they have been satisfied. Um, if further information comes out that requires deeper analysis, we would certainly undertake that. Uh, municipal services are very important. This development is required to be on full municipal services. And we note uh, in our report that it is subject to two very important documents. One is the uh, Manning Road Secondary Plan Stormwater Management Class Environmental Assessment Addendum of 2014 and the Tecumseh Functional Service and Report Draft for that same planning district dated February 2023. Um, there, the infrastructure necessary to uh, facilitate the development of the subject area in accordance with these documents currently is not in place. So for example, the stormwater management pond that's identified um, for that planning district, which is way down at the south end of the planning district against the railway track is not constructed, nor is, it, uh, is there infrastructure in place that direct flows there, um, nor are there sanitary sewers constructed along um, um, West Lake. Uh, or, or water mains in place. However, there are existing pieces of municipal infrastructure that can accommodate this development on an interim uh, condition. Uh, so the understanding is that that is an option that interim solutions could be arrived at. However, um, the preferred servicing scheme will need to be ultimately implement, implemented. And if this development happens in advance of it, there will need to be terms in um, the associated site plan agreement that make it clear that the site has to hook into whatever the long-term servicing solutions might be. <clears throat> 
Sorry, so, and the site plan uh, control agreement would be the tool that's used by the municipality to provide clarity around the expectations of uh, servicing on an interim basis and on a long-term basis. And it may be that as this process evolves and the development approval process proceeds, that some of the um, preferred servicing infrastructure could be put in place. Um, and those discussions are ongoing and, and being given a consideration. So ultimately this development would be subject to uh, site plan control um, if council were to support the rezoning and the uh, developer wishes to proceed. Um, and there would be uh, an application required for site plan control, addressing all the normal issues that would be addressed on a site development, um, including landscaping, parking and access um, and offsite improvements. So the purpose of this evening's meeting, Mr. Chair, is to hear input. Uh, Dave Petret is here as the applicant and there are um, some others who would like to speak to this as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hillman. At this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. David Petretta, the applicant, if there's anything you'd like to share with the members of council. Uh, good evening, Deputy Mayor McKetty and councillors and administration. So uh, first of all, thanks to Mr. Hillman for giving a very detailed, I guess, uh, summary of what we're trying to achieve on the property and the uh, things that we have to deal with along the way. And, and we're confident along through the site plan control process, we'll get those resolved. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, a few years ago when we were looking to build our first hotel, our primary desire was to put it in the town of Tecumseh. And as you know, we have very limited opportunity for larger scale commercial properties here. So it ended up, uh, we built it in Lakeshore. And now that that property's stabilized, we have a fantastic team there running it. Um, we're, we're prepared and ready to open our second property. Um, there's continued growing demand for extended stay properties. So this property is going to be a 142 room, all extended stay suites. Uh, the brand is going to be uh, Town Place Suites by Marriott. Um, just understanding the demand around the community, but also what's coming with the battery plant and all this other new infrastructure projects in the mega hospital. Uh, we know we need to get this up and built as quickly as possible. So it did take a very long time of uh, searching until we were successful in acquiring this piece of property. And although there are some additional details we need to deal with along the way, it, it's you know definitely worth the challenges because we're confident in its location and hopefully its ability to, to spur the additional uh, commercial development along that corridor and create a nice little commercial node for the community that's going to come uh, with potentially another 1,000 or 1,500 homes in that MRSPA area. So. Um, Really, I'm here to answer any questions that you might have about the project itself or uh, the hotel. And, um, and just thank you for considering the application. Very good, thank you very much. So uh, if there's any questions from members of council, we can listen to our second uh, delegation. We have uh, Josette Eugenie and Jeff Sylvester here in the audience, if we hear from them, and then we'll open up to questions from members of council. Thank you. Josette, you could pull up a chair there if you want to sit next to Jeff. You're good there? Okay. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. She's a little bit shy. Uh, Deputy Mayor, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I'd like to uh, say that we're quite excited to see development start in the Manning Road secondary plan area. Uh, it's excited to see uh, the first thing to go is commercial because we all know that that's going to draw residents to the area. Uh, we're very excited that Dave has acquired the property because he brings three developers to the Manning Road secondary plan area that are eager to uh, move forward. Uh, through his leadership, he's acquired the conveyance of land to connect to Westlake, and we can ultimately build the sanitary connection there. Uh, we're, we're very excited, and we wanted to throw our support behind this to, so that we're a unified front. And I'm sure if Steve was here, he would be uh, applauding the same. And we're, we're really grateful to see things get started. Um, that's, that's probably the, the sum of it. We're, we're uh, excited. So thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. S uh, Mr. Sylvester and Ms. Eugenie for, for the support. And again, as you know, this is a, a long time coming and it's going to be the fuel. It's going to be the ignition to that secondary plan on Manning and Banwell. Uh, we got to be braced ourselves, but uh, like you said, this is needs to get done earlier rather than later, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, pursuing in the process. So I'll open up to questions from members of council here. If there's any questions, Councillor Jobin. 
Thank you, through Mr. Chair. It's not a question. I just would like to thank Mr. Petretta and your team for choosing to come see for this project and this development. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Higginson. Thanks very much through you. Uh, I want to echo what Councillor Jobin said. Um, thank you very much for not only considering Tecumseh for this, but also considering what the future Tecumseh um, will benefit from this as well. And it's around that that I have a bit of a question. There is commercial and the hotel. Is the intention to build them in kind of two phases or will they kind of go up simultaneously? Um, and, and with that in mind, is there... Um, no, I'll just leave it there, actually. <laughs> Uh, so our primary focus is obviously get the hotel up and running as quickly as possible. But just given the timelines of the construction of that site and that particular building, we're fairly confident what we would ideally do is build the entire site at the same time, just because it leaves one clean site at the grand opening. Uh, we just have to see how much traction we get with some of the national retailers we've been chat uh, chatting with. And until we really get started, we're not going to get a lot of momentum. I, I haven't really pushed it. But that would be the goal to get it all open at the same time. And, and again, same thing like Jeff alluded to, you know, these are kind of the services that are going to help support future commercial and, and help people decide to choose that area to, to live. So okay. Councillor Dorner. Oh, sorry, Councillor Tonio. And then we have uh, no questions. Just same thing. I like to thank you, Mr. Petretta and the Sylvester family for supporting this. Uh, it's going to be a great resource coming into our area. And I look forward to the development that it'll spin off into the future. So it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for bringing this forward. Thanks. Councilor Houston. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, through you. And, and again, I'll, I'll echo all the comments that we have here. Uh, not so much with this project, but I know traffic has been one thing that has been mentioned about um, you know, this project specifically, the road network as it is today can handle it. Um, my only, uh, I guess, ask for administration, um, recognizing the, uh, uh, Mr. Bertretta does have the conveyance and in, in the Westlake extension, we know what's planned. Uh, when we're having conversations with the county, if we can, you know, push that um, uh, and, and have those conversations and, you know, try to get that, you know, bubbling to the top. Uh, we all know how busy Las France is right now. And, um, you know, having that connection uh, will, will be a great thing um, uh, for this property and to help alleviate a lot of the traffic issues that we're seeing. Now, I do recognize there is uh, a ton of construction going on, which is impacting uh, the traffic that we're seeing now. But um, we're only going to build, you know, more properties, more homes, uh, there will be more vehicles. So if we can just advocate um, you know, for that project specifically when we're having the conversations with the county. And I know uh, Deputy Mayor, Mayor at the county will, will do the same if, um, you know, we can do that with administration. Um, it would be a good thing. So thank you. Yep. Councilor Higginson, you have another question? Thanks very much. And thank you for sparking the second question that I had and then dropped off. Uh, so uh, and through you, this could be to, to you or to, uh, to administration as well. I want to recognize that we're kind of taking some uh, current farmland and, and turning it into a, some, some concrete. And so what are, I'm hoping that maybe in the site plan control, there is a bit of climate mitigation strategies and trees and those sorts of things that can offset a little bit of that um, uh, that impact that we're making to that area of, of town. And so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the plans for what maybe tree cover or, or those sorts of things. Through you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, very good question. Um, the official plan does have some um, wording around the importance of design having regard to climate change. Um, and the site plan stage would be the time to incorporate those types of features. We, we really don't have, he has a preliminary plan and really those are always to help conceptualize, you know, what was the site look like? What, what's the scale of development and so on? Uh, but the issues are around adequate tree cover and, you know, really taking into account removing land that is currently um, basically a bare soil, it's farmed. Um, and, and how do we address issues? And it's not just uh, water absorption and quality and quantity of storm water that's handled, but um, you know, the issue around heat islands and so on, uh, we do take into account. And I think you know, you'll recall that there have been recent um, subdivisions coming forward that you know, tree-lined streets are certainly part of the municipality's efforts to ensure that 
those are provided and over time um, help to address those issues. So those are discussions we would have through the site plan process typically. All right, thank you. If there's no other questions, again, you heard the enthusiasm here at the, around the table, members of council. Thank you, uh, Mr. Prochetta, for, for doing and setting up uh, this hotel here in the town of Tecumseh. So looking forward to the next steps. If there's no other further questions, we move on to communications. We have items one, two, three. We have a motion to receive those. Moved by Councillor Jobin, supported by Councillor Dorner. All in favor? Opposed, and that carries, thank you. Uh, item H, reports. Uh, we have a motion here that the report, zoning bylaw amendment, south side of County Road 22, scheduling of a public meeting be received. Moved by Councillor Houston, supported by Councillor Tonio. All in favor, opposed, and that carries, thank you. And being no further business, the Tuesday, June 27th meeting of the public council meeting be adjourned. Moved by Councilor Toyn, supported by Councilor Higginson. All in favor? Opposed, not carries. Thank you.